I remember in the ministry receiving a call late one Wednesday afternoon from another Dutch Reformed Germany. Nice folks. I said, uh, he said to me, my brother, I've got a problem. I need you to go and speak to one of my elders. And I said, well, he's your elder. Why don't you go? He said, no, I'm unable to deal with this problem. It was a year later that I discovered, unfortunately, the Dormini had the same problem his elder did. Uh, it concerned his elbow and the amount of alcohol that he would consume in a day. Well, I collected a colleague because it's always good. That afternoon, my wife couldn't go with me. We always do everything together. And so we went a few miles out of town to where this magnificent residence was. And right there as we stopped, in the front garden I saw a brand new Volkswagen vehicle, one of their range. And I knew it was new because on the tires you could still see the little spicules of rubber. It probably had about two, three thousand k's on the clock. And it was smashed. He'd rolled it the previous day. This man that we had come to see. So we knocked on the door. I could see him sitting in the kitchen because in that part of the world you always enter somebody's house through the kitchen uh, and he just ignored us and so I knocked again and he ignored us and then I opened the door and I walked in and I said we've come to see you he said uh, are, you, are, are, are you a Dormini? I said no I'm a pastor your German has asked me to come and speak to you. He said, well, I'll see you when I come back. Just then a taxi had stopped outside. He had phoned for a taxi to come and take him the 12 miles into town so that he could go and stock up on whiskey. He said, uh, but my wife is here. You can speak to her. I'll speak to you when I get back. And so he said, go into the lounge. And my colleague and I did that. And we were waiting. He said, my wife will be with you now. After about five minutes, uh, I heard this peculiar sound. It sounded like a tortoise walking on linoleum. And so I went to the door and I looked up the passage and there was his wife coming to speak to us. Bombed out of her mind on alcohol. In fact, just the previous week, the welfare had removed their 13-year-old son because they were deemed to be unfit parents to look after this child. And alcohol had both of them by the throat and was surely murdering them. And we spoke to her as well as we were able in her condition until after about an hour the taxi stopped and heard clank clank of bottles and the man came back into the house and then disappeared into the house. And after about five, six minutes he came back he said, oh, <coughs> uh, I'm ready to speak to you now. God laid a word in my heart and I said to him, I know exactly where you've hidden those bottles you've just bought. And he looked at me and said, well, you weren't with me, how can you know? I said, you went into the second bathroom and you opened the cistern and the toilet and you put a bottle in there. And then you went to the spare bedroom, the second one. And on the third shelf in your chest of drawers, you hid another bottle. I said, my machtig. Were, were you spying on me? I said, no, God just showed me where they were. And then he came and he sat down. He said, oh, Pastor, you guys have got to help us, man. We want to get our boy back. Uh, the, the, the welfare have stolen him. I said, no, they didn't steal him. They took him away for his own safety. He said, I'm here this afternoon to tell you that you need urgent help. We're going to try and have you hospitalized. Are you prepared to go? And he said, yes, we'll go. And so I phoned a Christian doctor. You know what he said to me when I explained the situation? He said, uh, Pastor, I've got a problem with you. You're trying to push everybody into heaven. I said, sorry, my friend, you've got it wrong. I'm not trying to push them into heaven. This guy I'm asking you to help, I've got a hold of his hair and I'm trying to drag him out of hell. Now, will you help me? And so he agreed and both were admitted to a semi-private ward where they could be together in the local hospital. Now, I said, uh, I'm going to take you this afternoon 
He said, no, we can't go this afternoon. We'll go tomorrow. I said, oh, yes, I've heard that from an alcoholic before. He said, but tomorrow I can't be at to fetch you at 8 o'clock, but I'm going to send a policeman friend of mine. Can he come and fetch you? Oh, yes, they'll be waiting for him. The next morning at 8, my friend who was a lieutenant in the local police force arrived. And there he was sitting on the bed with the bags packed to go to hospital, but with a gun muzzle in his mouth. And Kippy said to him, that was his name, don't be a fool, put down the gun, I've come to fetch you, to take you to hospital. And so they were admitted. And I went to visit them that afternoon. And I went the following day. And then I mm, did something I don't normally do. I went on a Saturday. Uh, and as I walked down the corridor of the hospital, I heard this clapping, clanging sound. I said, oh my word, what's going on? And as I entered the ward, there was his wife strapped to her bed with leather belts because she was going into withdrawal, alcohol withdrawal with delirium three men. And I prayed with them and then I went home. But I kept visiting them until I knew they were totally sober because I never counsel somebody under the influence. You really are wasting your time. And I counseled with them. It was a Thursday afternoon and I said, you guys have got to seriously consider your situation. You need Jesus. That's the only solution. And I said, I'm coming back tomorrow and I want an answer from you. And I went back on the Friday and the man came to me at the door and he said, my wife and I are both ready. I said, no, 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 that's too easy. You need a couple more days to consider. And so I went back on the Monday and I said, what have you decided? And they said, the only solution for us is to ask Jesus to change our situation. And so I did something unusual. I went and I locked the door so the sister couldn't come in. I told them to kneel next to the bed, the husband and wife, and I knelt with them. Lovingly, I just led them into the arms of Jesus. Then for the following two or three weeks, I visited them virtually every day. But we'd also arranged with the local alcoholic hospital to have them dried out thoroughly. And so the time came after about three and a half, four weeks in hospital for them to be discharged. And again, I couldn't fetch them. And I sent Kippy, the same policeman, to do that for me. But I said to the husband, now listen, Leon, I've got a special request. And he said, Pastor, you ask anything, I'll do it. Do you need money? I said, no, I'm not interested in your money. I said, when you get home, go and stand in the kitchen with your wife, Santi. Then you go and fetch all the, your hidden stash of alcohol. Bring it to the kitchen. He said, Pastor, must I give it away? I said, no, put somebody else in your situation. He said, what I want you to do as the head of the house, to open every seal and to pour the liquid down the zinc. When you've done that, I want you to put the bottles on the floor. He said, why? He said, because the Bible tells us in Joshua 1 verse 8, every place that the sole of your foot has trodden upon, that have I given unto you. So when you've emptied the bottle, put it down and quote those words. And I drummed it into him until he had it right. And he did that. And four days later, they were admitted to the alcoholic hospital for six weeks but you see the day before when he had rolled that motor car that I told you about in the beginning he'd sold his house in the bar a magnificent mansion of a home for a paltry amount of 30,000 rand and we tried to have that overturned by the magistrate he said no it's a legal document it has been signed by witnesses the sale goes through and so they lost that house the last day they were there, I went to say goodbye and I didn't know where they would be going. But I prayed with them and committed them into the Lord's hands. Do you know, for two and a half years, never heard a word. But, oh Lord, be gracious unto them. Every day I pray for them. Then one night, sitting in my study, I got a phone call. It was a Saturday evening, preparing for the Sunday service. 
the man on the line said, uh, Hello, Pastor. said, Hi. said, Do you know who's speaking? Hmm. That's something to ask a pastor. You meet so many people, you can't keep track of all of them. And he said, uh, Don't you recognize me? I said, There's something in your voice. I, I know I've spoken to you before. He said, It's Leon. And I said, Oh, goodness gracious. How are you and Santi, your wife? He said, Pastor, I phoned this evening just to tell you, it's two and a half years now, we've never touched another drink, and we're working amongst the alcoholics. And I thank God, my friends, there isn't a situation that God cannot change. They had their son back, they had their life back, they had their health back, and they were anointed for a ministry, and God is blessing them.